today I'm going to show you how to hide your Halloween lights using a tree stump that you make out of a clothes basket, a dollar store clothes basket, some pool noodles, some painter's tarp, and some stain. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, and you can kind of see the effect here. I just set this up. I just got done my uh, cauldron, which is the final piece of my display for this section. And I'm checking out to see how it looks. And since I'm looking, seeing how it looks, I figure make this part of the intro. You can see how it hides the light, lights up everything. Now, I also like this because it does a pretty cool thing. Last week I made a video, and in the video, uh, I made a tree stump out of cardboard as opposed to a clothes basket. This is one made out of cardboard. This is a clothes basket one over here. And if you take a look, there's an effect here, which depending upon what you want and what you like, it actually looks like the tree stump is on fire from the inside and that's from the lights going on uh, you don't really get the same effect as the cardboard one so if you want one that's a little translucent the clothes basket one works really well if you want one that's not translucent the cardboard one works, works really well so this is the, what I'm going for I'm going for some way to hide my Halloween lights and this is what I have first thing you're gonna do for a tree stump made out of a uh, clothes basket from the dollar store get a clothes basket get a pair something to cut with. Now I'm using a pair of shears. Now basically what I'm trying to do here is, this is thinner at the top, flares out down at the bottom. I want to get a little bit more uniform as it's going up down. It doesn't have to be exact, or, but I do want it more. I'm going to cut up here, I'm going to pull it together, and then I'm going to zip tie it together. And that's going to make the one side a little more and more compressed. It won't look quite as uh, lopsided as it does now. First thing you want to do to get a tree trunk stump going here it, uh, using the clothes basket is a little bit of cutting. Got a pair of metal shears here, easily cuts through the plastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a slice down here, make the side a little bit shorter. The reason being is the side that people are on seeing or facing, I want it to be a little bit more up and down than the shape that this is right now. You know, it's just something I prefer. I'm going to cut it right down there. I'm going to pull it a little bit tauter. I'm going to use a zip tie to zip tie together. And then over here, I'm going to do a cutout. And this is where the light is going to shine outwards. So, got the metal shears here. Put the plastic right up the center. Grab a zip tie. Make it a little bit tight. So now you can see this side's a little bit more up and down, whereas this side's still uh, flaring out towards the bottom. So on this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the screening area, get my cutters. I'm gonna leave the top intact. I'm gonna leave the bottom intact. I'm just gonna cut out a little square here. I normally make it uh, seven or eight, that way I have a wide swath for the uh, light to shine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cut out the area. And this way, when I use the lights, and what I'm gonna use the uh, smaller tree trunks for, so I'm gonna use them with these Gemi lights. These Gemi lights don't give off much heat at all. They're very small. It'll be inside here, and it'll be shining out, giving and casting a nice light, while this side will look like a tree trunk, and it'll hide the light effectively the way I want it to. Now, I'm gonna make a top for this. Uh, you know, you can see the top on here, it's got holes in it and everything. One of the things we're gonna be doing later is we're gonna be uh, barking this, plastic corpsing or barking and covering it in plastic. But I like to put some cardboard up here also uh, I just like the way the cardboard looks under the plastic better texture, you know, you don't have to worry about putting your fingers through any holes or anything like that. That's where you just get this. Now, I've got tons of cardboard laying around the garage. Uh, I use it for a whole bunch of different things. And 
When I do these tree stumps, I'm actually making probably about 12 to 13 of these tree, tree stumps. I've already got a couple done. I'll probably make another 11 or 12 more. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm doing most of them now. I'm just stopping every now and then to do this tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to be using this piece of cardboard. I'm going to try to cut out a couple. To, I'll cut out the first uh, top. That'll be my template. And then I'll just trace a couple more. And then I'm going to get a nice sharp razor blade. And I'm going to start cutting them out. And this key thing here is sharp razor blade. If you use a dull razor blade, you run the risk of uh, slipping, slicing uh, up your fingers or something. I got a few scars on my hands from uh, when I was younger, doing projects and wound up cutting my hands uh, open. Definitely want to try to avoid that. I actually like to go a little bit larger than what the top actually is. So I'm going around there and when I actually cut this out, I'm going to probably cut an extra inch or so just to make it a little bit larger. Grab the razor blade. Now, one of the things I'm, I also do, even though I'm going to have this in the air for a lot of the cut, I like to have a piece of cardboard under it. Uh, I've sliced up tables. Uh, my workbench over there has a nice slice down the center from where I was cutting something with a razor blade. Put too much pressure in, went through. So, nice to have something underneath that will help act as a buffer zone. Just going around here. Doesn't need to be a perfect circle. Smart thing also is probably anytime you're cutting with razor blade, cut away from your body. And now I got my template. What I'll do is put one here, draw another circle. And cut all these to about size. Put one. Right here. One right here. I'll be able to get four tops from this one piece of cardboard. So I got my tops cut out. I'm going to put in the tops on top of here. And I can't stress enough, use a sharp razor blade when you do this. Razor blades are cheap. Uh, medical bills <laughs> that really aren't that cheap. One of the things I always do when I uh, finish up with the razor blade, I always just get a piece of uh, duct tape or something, cut a little piece off, and put it over the sharp end before I th uh, dispose of it. That way, if anybody goes in the trash or something, they're not as likely to cut themselves, you know, even like trash bin or something like that. Just like a little considerate, considerate type of thing to do. So now I've got this cardboard on top. And it's an irregular, sh irregular shape, and that's fine because most trees, when you look at them and they've been cut down, they aren't perfect circles. There's uh, irregularities in them. So I'm going to put this on top here. I'm going to get a little bit of tape. I'm going to tape this to the sides. But before I put the cardboard on, I have to encase this in plastic, and that's what I'm going to show you next. Now on this build, the reason I like this uh, doing these tree trunks this way so much is that it's pretty much almost all waterproof as it is. The baskets are waterproof. The pool noodles are waterproof. The plastic that you put on top is waterproof. So you have you get skip, like in the other trunk builds I was doing, this one here and this one here, you have to take time and go through and cover all the plastic, uh, all the cardboard in plastic to protect it from the elements. For this one, this is the only weak point. The top that you're about to put on, this is the only thing that you really need to encase in plastic. Uh, what you need for this is you need spray adhesive respirator because paint, glue, things like that, you know, you don't want that stuff getting in your lungs because it's not good for your lungs. I mean, if you've ever seen like the aerosol glue, like you see it floating through the air, you don't want that stuff going in your lungs if you can avoid it. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put a nice liberal, liberal amount on this side, put the plastic on, flip over, nice liberal amount on this side, put the plastic down, and do it two or three times and get a nice coating. Once you have it encased in plastic, you know, make sure you scrunch it around the sides so that the sides are also protected. We're going to hit it with the heat gun. After we hit it, the heat gun will kind of shrink wrap it. After you hit it with the heat gun, you take a pair of scissors and you cut it up. Now, I'm not going to be able to talk during this point because I'm going to have my respirator on and you will not be able to understand a word I am saying. But I do want to take you through this and show you what I'm doing. So.
down cutting this. I'm not going right up the edge because I've got a nice seal around the edge of it. I'm coming off about probably about 10, 15 millimeters, give myself a little space here. When we uh, do stuff later on, we're going to do stuff and leaving a little bit there will not matter at all. So I'm going around here, cutting it off. And what I've done is I've effectively waterproofed the cardboard. Now I take this and I'll put it on top of here, get a little bit of tape. I'm going to tape it on here, a couple different areas. Overlaps a little bit, that's fine. I'm also going to get some plastic wrap and I'll shrink wrap it in a little bit. Then I'm going to start setting up the root system, putting uh, pull noodles on. Then another layer of shrink wrap, stain it, paint it, and it's done. This project literally, you know, takes about an hour to do. Done. I've got my base pretty well set up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plastic. I'm going to do the plastic barking or corpsing or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to spray the clothes basket with the glue. And I'm just going to take this, I'm going to put it on, I'm going to press it around, I'm going to encircle it a couple of times, and I'm going to have my base for the tree trunk. Again, since I'm using the glue, I'm using the respirator, so I won't be able to talk during this point. One of the things you'll notice is that there are a lot of wrinkles on top of here. And that's actually a good thing. I'm going to try to press them down. There's a little bit of a bare spot in here. I'm going to take a little bit of plastic and just put it right on that spot there so it looks a little more uniformly wrinkled, if that makes any sense. And the cool thing about this is that it gives it almost the appearance of wood that's been cut down you know, or a tree that's fallen over. So I put that right there. And I've got the whole thing corpsed. Now the next thing I'm going to do is hit it with the heat gun, shrink wrap it a little bit, get a little bit tighter. Then I'm going to get the pool noodles. I'm going to wrap the pool noodles in some uh, shrink wrap, stain it, paint it, done. Things you did is you covered up the part with the uh, where the lights don't be projecting out of. That's really no big deal whatsoever. If that was a wrap, it'll harden up a little bit. Take a pair of scissors, cut it out and it'll look fine. Now when you're doing this part, because you are burning plastic, you want to be in a well ventilated area. I've got the garage door open over there. I've got windows open. I've got airflow in here. I'm not that concerned. But if you're in a basement or something, I would probably grab a table, take all your stuff out to the driveway, and just do this in the driveway. As a matter of fact, since I'm going to be doing so many tonight, even though I'm in the garage and I got the airflow going through, I'm probably dragging this out to the uh, driveway and doing these in the driveway just to be safe. Now, the cool thing about this is the plastic shrink wraps, conforms, hardens up a little bit, and it gives you a nice base for when you put the uh, pull noodles on and for when you stain later on. I want the light to come through, just take a pair of scissors. Cut it out. The nice thing about this project, nothing's really hard to do. Now I'm going to hit these edges with the heat gun one more time just to seal up the edges.
and I'm ready to do the pool noodles. You do the roots and try a couple different ways to do the roots. The way that I found it works for me, uh, you have to be able to hold the pool noodles in place so that they'll stay in one place while you set them into the position that you want. Also while you wrap them and corpse them. The way I found it works for me is I get like uh, several of the 11 inch zip ties. I make one large zip tie out of them. After I put them all together, just go through, cut off the ends. And this is something I'm going to be experimenting with as I do more in the future. I normally wrap it around, put it together like this, and then I have the looseness and I slide the uh, different pool noodles up as I'm going around. What I might try to do next, this like in, with the couple that I'm experimenting with is since the clothes basket already has holes built in, I might just take a razor blade or a screwdriver, poke holes, and run my uh, zip ties more locally instead of around the whole thing. And that might make it a little more secure and a little bit easier to play with. But since I'm doing a tutorial, I'm gonna go with what I've done before on a couple of different occasions. And that's just putting the zip ties around here. Now when you do this, you don't want to tighten it up too much right now because you're going to be fitting pool noodles up around, under a couple of different corners. The way I like to do this back here, you don't have to worry about any pool noodles because that's where your lights are going to go. I like to have a main set of branch uh, roots coming off there, one in the center, one off the side over here, and I do one here and one here, and it gives what I think is a pretty cool look. Now when you're doing the pool noodles, now this probably will be different sizes. Uh, when you do them. Once again, you want to have a sharp razor blade. You want to figure out how long you want them. Now, I don't know if you can really go too long unless you're uh, worried about storage space, but you can definitely get it too short on them where they don't look too good. I probably go normally about two, two and a half feet when I do these. So I've got one here. I'm going to make this a main root. Now, figure out where I want it. Put it up against there. First thing I'm going to do is take my razor blade, do a cut here. That way, it's not fighting as much and it's going to stay in place a little bit easier. Now, I also like to cut out a little section here. So it's not protruding away from the stem too much. Slip this up under. And you can have it under there or you can have it above. Now if you want to give it like a, it's a tree that fell in the woods and it's got a nice splintered look to it, I would leave that above. You can leave it in the shape that it is or you can cut like a little uh, point into it, now, however you want to do it. Then I'm going to take another pool noodle I'm going to make a couple side roots coming in here. And for the side roots, I make them shorter, a little bit shorter than the main root. I take a pool noodle, and I cut that length of pool noodle in half. And figure out where I want this. Cut a little slice in here, so it bends a little bit easier. Now if you want to, the way I like to do this is I like to have this coming in on down here. So you might want to cut a little angle so it melds into this a little bit easier. Now that's easy enough to do. Do the other side. It's a little easier to bend. Do my slice.
as I do this, I'm going to have that forming up there. I have that coming over there. When I wrap it, it's going to look pretty cool. I'm going to do this, like I said, with the side root there, back root there, side root there, and then right there and right there. And it's going to have a single length of pool noodle coming out without the crisscrossing roots. And that will give me the look I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a couple minutes off camera. I'm going to take some time, set up my roots. I'll be back in a couple minutes. The roots put into place here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, give this a tug right here, make sure it's in nice and tight. Now as you put them in, it's going to get snugger, more and more snug. So you're going to be pretty well set. I'm doing a lot above here because I want to give it a look like it was a tree that splintered in the middle of the woods. I'm probably also going to take a little bit of uh, foam. I'll probably use a little bit of glue in a couple minutes, adhesive, put a little bit there. Put a little bit there. And just give it like that really splintered type look like it didn't fall the way, you know, no, it wasn't like cut down. So, what I'm going to do next is take the heat gun. I'm going to hit all these different uh, areas with the heat gun and try to texture the pool noodles a little bit and give it a more root-like look. So I got the heat gun here. And once again, something you want to do in a well-ventilated space. Now the way I like to do this is I like to have some high areas and some low areas. And I think that's what gives it more of a root-like look to it. And once you uh, plastic bark it or corpse it, it's all going to come together in one piece and it's going to look really, really, really good. So here I got one of my single pieces. Get the end really good. Shrink that up. How much you do is up to you. Whatever pattern you want to do, go with whatever feels right. And that's one of the things about this, you know, it's like a quick project, but it's also a project you can have a lot of fun with. You know, you're designing it, making it how you want to do it. It's the type of project where if you screw up, screw ups are easy to cover for. Sometimes screw ups even make it look better. I'm going to do this all the way around with all the different roots. And now I'm going to start plastic barking it in a couple of minutes. Heated the pool, pool noodles, give them the texture that I want. Next step is to like basically put a bark on top of the pool noodles. So I'm putting it on the respirator because I want to protect the wall. So I've got the first one wrapped down here. I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun. I would suggest when you're first doing this, hit each of the different, like do the, like wrap it, then heat it. Cause this way you'll be learning as you go along and you'll figure out how exactly you wanna do it, what to look for, what type of mistakes. Now, one of the things you might have noticed I was doing is wherever the gaps were, I was pushing it down into the gaps. That's so that it looks a little bit better. Picking up each of the, uh, like we'll be wrapping the ends of each of the uh, roots and then we'll be wrapping another one around here in the top one more time uh, give it a seamless more cohesive look to it when you're doing this you don't want to stay in any place one place too long you might want to wear a pair of thick gloves so you can press stuff down where you want it you know the heat doesn't bother me that much but different people have different tolerances for that type of stuff get underneath and you don't have to like superheat it and melt it you can act if you heat it a lot it'll get really hard and wrap around it and that is a good look look also but then you run the risk of burning through and having holes in it which I prefer not to have in mind
now it's sealed and obviously we're not putting the plastic wrap around here for uh, waterproofing because pool noodles I mean, they're designed for water uh, basically this is to take the three pieces or the one piece and give it a more cohesive look and also gives a place for the stain to stick to and make it look more like the color of the tree. It's wrapped now and you can see it's kind of got a little bit of shape and definition when we uh, stain it and we paint it it'll look better. I've had a couple people suggest online of putting eyes on here if you want to. Uh, you could get like a skull, cut the face of the skull off, put that, embed that in there somewhere. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to like really spruce this up and make it even cre creepier. Uh, one of the things to remember is when you play, uh, oh, pool noodles. When you get pool noodles, you can get them from a couple different places. Uh, the places I normally get them from are Walmart and the dollar store. Walmart, they're 97 cents each normally. They're four feet long. Dollar store, they are dollar. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, they're dollar and they're four feet long. House, I, I generally like to get them from five and below. They're a dollar, but they're five feet long, so you get a little bit more out of them. Uh, as far as this goes, this is three five foot long noodles. You could probably get it out three four foot long noodles, so the noodles are three bucks. And that's one of the nice things about this is the cost and everything. Uh, if you already have some basic materials, it's going to be really, really cheap. The baskets, a dollar. Pool noodles are three dollars. Cardboard, you can find that laying around. Plastic wrap, uh, you can get a roll of it for like maybe a buck, buck fifty, two dollars, I don't know. And you can actually get enough plastic wrap to do a couple of these. Stain can cost like fifteen dollars per uh, can. You can do a lot of these with that fifteen dollar can. Paint brushes, you go to uh, Harbor Freight and you get a whole bunch of heart, like paint brushes for a really, really, really cheap price. So, you know, if you're doing a whole bunch of these, your costs go way, way down. Next step is I'm gonna be putting plastic around, wrap around the upper half here. Now, one of the things I really like to see in this while I'm doing it is you'll see there are a lot of wrinkles in here and there's a lot of wrinkles in there. I want that because the wrinkles are one of the things that makes this really, really look good. Uh, after we stain it, we're gonna dry brush it and when you dry brush it, it really makes everything pop out. It looks really, really good. It gives it depth, things, things like that. Now, I'm using a couple of different terms here. Now, I'm assuming most people have heard of some of this stuff, but no, thinking about it, a lot of people may not have. Now, I'm using terms like plastic corpsing and plastic barking. That comes from a video I saw years ago, Stilt Beast Studios video by a person named Alan Haas. Now, I'm not sure if he invented it or if he was just show, like doing the tutorial, but it's one of the things where I remember watching it, he was corpsing a skeleton. I was sitting there thinking, no, I can even do that. So I got a skeleton, wrapped it, I really liked the way it looked, thought it was cool, did a second one, thought that was cool, and I'm like, now what, because you can only wrap so many skeletons before it's like, okay, whatever. And I started applying it to a lot of different things to where I use it for, uh, the base, like I use it for the roots, I use it for the tree guys I have over there, uh, I use it for the witches, I got a bunch of creepers up there. Now I use it for a lot of different props, and it was just that one video really opened up my world to a lot of different possibilities that I could do with it. Uh, other terms, now I'm using is something called dry brushing, and basically what dry brushing is, is where you, <clears throat> after you stain it, you, know, you paint it, stain, get it brown, whatever you can, get different colors, and you're going to lightly brush different areas with different colors, and it's going to make things pop out. So, it'll take a couple minutes. Uh, once again, I'm going to be wearing the respirator while I do this because I'll be using a lot of, uh, of the spray adhesive. And what I'll be doing is I'll be spraying all the way around here, sticking it to the top. I'll show you a little bit on video, and then you know, you'll be able to figure out the rest. So, I got my plastic here. Got my respirator right here.
as you're doing this, you want to form it into all the grooves and everything. You want to get the definition uh, with it. Try to cover everything up. Like I said, try to get like, push it in, get into all the little grooves. And I'm doing this my way. One of the things that you might do is like, you might be doing this, you might be like, I, look, I think this looks better if I do it this way or if I do it that way. That's great. Do it the way that you think looks best. Make sure you're happy with it. It's fine that it's covering this. Just go back, cut that out again. Warm it up nice and tight. One of the things we'll be doing, I'll be doing a couple of layers. I'm just showing you the one layer on tape as I do it right now. I'll be going over it with the heat gun. I'm going to try to get it all nice and conforming really, really well. All right, now I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. I'm going to shrink wrap it a little bit. Now, if you're a little nervous, anytime you, you, you do something that you're not sure how to do it, I always say start with the back where nobody's going to see it. Now, it's like when you're painting, staining, dry brushing, you know, if you want to do a little bit of practice, come around the side nobody's going to see. That way, if you mess up, who cares? Uh, now, as I hit this, you'll notice you can see the purple through the uh, shrink wrap. That's fine. See the purple through the shrink wrap down there? That's fine because what's going to be happening is we're going to hit it with stain later on, and that stain is going to make it a uniform color and hide all that type of stuff. As you're doing this, just push it into the uh, shape and everything. Try and give it a really, really, really cool look. Now when you're heating this up, you want to try not to put any holes in it. If you do, since it's all plastic underneath, it's not that big of a deal. No, it's just personal preference. I don't want it to have that. Like I said, if you look on top of here, you can see all these wrinkles and everything. I love that. That's the type of thing that's going to really pop out once we dry brush it. It's going to make it look really, really nice. So I'm just about done heating it up, get a pair of scissors, cut out that section there where the lights don't shine out, and this is ready to be stained. So what I'm going to do is stain it, get it all looking nice, let it dry overnight. Tomorrow when I get home from work, come on out, dry brush it, and it'll be done. The last step is, after staining is to do a little bit of dry brushing. Now, as far as dry brushing goes, I have a bunch of different colors. I use acrylic paints. Uh, what I did is, you know, a week or two ago, I was around, I was looking at all the trees on the property. I was trying to get an idea of what the trees on the property uh, looked like. And I made colors that kind of mixed with the trees. Now, I've got a dark gray, light gray, a white, a green, and a light brown. And those are the primary colors that I use when I do this. Now, right now, I have the back pointed towards me. The reason I have the back pointed towards me is I like to experiment a little bit before I go out front and like kind of commit to colors. Now, when I do this, I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way. I've got my way of doing it. And the way I generally do is I start with darker colors and then I go lighter, lighter, and lighter. So, first color I'm gonna use back here is a darkest gray color. And for this, I'm not trying to like paint, like grind it in. I'm just like lightly brushing. So, okay, I like the way it's going. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting the uh, higher, uh, the lower spots with this, or I will be. Okay, I'm hitting a low spot there, up there, low spot. And spin this around. Hit down here with the gray, hit in between the spots there. And what I'm hoping I'm doing by using the dark color in these uh, deeper areas, so I'm hoping I'm giving a sense of depth, depth a little bit. Okay, right in there, right there. Now I'm not an artist, so this is not my specialty. 
I just try to have a little fun. I go with what I think will look good. I also put a little bit on the top here, not a lot. I do all the different colors up top. Around the edge just a little bit. Also hit like in here when I heated it up I did some like uh, deep spots and trying to hit the deep spots there. Do the same thing right here. Get underneath. And I got my first layer on. For the second layer, I'm gonna go with the lighter gray. I'm gonna get more of the high spots for the lighter gray. gray is like kind of like almost like a grayish white so I'll hit it with this and then after this I'll be going with a white and then I've got a greenish color that kind of mimics the moss that grows on the trees around here now I'm kind of doing a fast job right now probably off camera I might do a little more detail just trying to give an idea of what I do for this. Like I said, I'm sure there are artists out there that will look at this and be like, there's a lot better ways to do that. That's fine. Spinning it around. There's no science to what I'm doing. I'm just going wherever I think it's gonna look good. Here. Like I said, the main thing I want you to notice is I'm not pressing into this. I'm not trying to like uh, smear a ton of paint on here. I'm not trying to like totally overwhelm the brown stain. I want that stain to remain as like the underlying layer. Now when you look at trees, trees tend to have a brown base for the most part. And since the stain I use is a hickory gel stain, that makes sense that this is a treeish color since hickory is a tree. Like you can see, I'm trying to hit most areas. The brown's still very noticeable under it, but other colors are also noticeable. And then I'm gonna hit the top here. Once again, lightly, going across. Just hitting different areas. And basically, by dry brushing, you're bringing out a lot of definition, you're hitting the higher points. This is where like having wrinkles and everything's really cool because the wrinkles kind of become a little more prominent and it starts to look more like Treeish, if that's a word. All right. Next, I'm going to hit a white. Once again, if I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not, I just hit it back here. Okay, I like the way that looks. So I'm going to put the white on top.
until we overwhelm the tree with the different colors. Always keep that brown base. And the thing is, it's the lighter color, like the brown colors I like, but it's the lighter colors that when people look at it, they tend to notice and tends to attract the eye. Now it gives us a definition. And in my opinion, it kind of gives it the personality. And one of the things that you can do is if you come across something and you put a little bit too much of color on there, you're not liking how the color looks, I use this Satin Espresso uh, Rust-Oleum spray. And what I'll do is like, let's say I don't like this color here, I'll spray a little bit there, just like, pssst, and then give it a couple seconds to dry or actually like a minute or two to dry. And then I paint over it and it takes care of any mistakes. The other nice thing about this is let's say you have an area that's hard to reach with the brush and the uh, stain, just squirt this in there. It's close enough to the color of the stain that people don't even, like you came and notice that you used a little bit of spray paint there. Okay. Almost done with the whitest color. No. And my goal here is to have the dark color still peeking through, the less dark color still peeking through, and then you have the white color. So all the colors are kind of contributing to the overall look of this. And then up here, there was some white. With the edges. Okay. And then the last color I'm gonna use is this brownish color. I only use this color on the top. And what I'm trying to do with this is uh, the outside, I'm hoping once it totally dries, will look very worn. And then this is kind of like a fresher, younger, more of a poppy brown. I'm gonna be putting this on here. And when I say poppy, I mean pops. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the top. I'm hoping that it kind of makes it look like this is the younger part and hasn't been exposed to the elements as much. Like I said, trying to bring out all the definition of all the wrinkles and stuff that are in there. And when I do this, I do try to get the wrinkles in there. I don't want it just to just be flat because those wrinkles are, in my opinion, what gives it its personality. And now when you look at this from the front, Kind of got this tree trunkish look to it when I put it on the ground. Hopefully, it's don't look like a tree trunk just sitting there on the ground. No lightning storm or something happened, it split, it wasn't hit by a saw. That's why you got all these like jagged things around the edge. And that's the look that I'm going for. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some splotches of green. A lot of trees that we have on the property have a little bit of moss, and it's similar to this in color when it dries. So, just hit couple areas type of thing that I don't want too much of I want the type of thing where people look at it and they're like wow 
Looks a little mossy. Gives a little color, a little, a little definition, something to kind of catch the eye a little bit. Now, if you're not sure how something would look like, now if I was kind of like curious about this, I would try it on the side that people aren't going to look at first. Now I'm done the painting part. Uh, like I said, off camera eventually. I might add a little more just to make it look a little more better. But for the most part, this is it. You know, it's not like I did anything fancy. Believe me, I'm not an artist. If I passed any art classes in school, it was more or less like a pity type thing. You know, it's just like hitting it, dry brushing it, type of thing that is very doable by anybody who tries. So right now, got the tree trunk there. See how it's hiding the light. You can stuff the uh, wires and everything under there, no problem. And you can see how it's lighting up the tree demon that I have there. This is a Gemi fire and ice light. One of the things, uh, these lights here, they're fire and ice lights. Uh, you can normally find from Walmart, Home Depot, places like that. And when they come out in around Halloween, or before Halloween, a month or two before Halloween, they're $20. If you wait till two or three weeks after Halloween, you know, the ones that they still have left, they go down to $10, then down to $5, and then the last ones you can get for like $2.50. So if you hit stores at the right time, you can get them really, really, really cheap. This is a fire and ice light, and you can see how it's lighting up there. You can see how the tree looks there. Now we're gonna turn off the flash and show you what it looks like without the flash. Right. And this is what it looks like at night without the flash. Uh, if you can walk around the stump, so get an idea. You see the tree stump is hiding the light, no problem. It's lighting up the demonic tree really, really well. And that's the tree stump, another way to hide your lights. I hope that you find this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. If you like it, click like.